Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Thursday to you guys. I pray you guys received sweet sleep last night, woke up with bells and whistles on and ready to take on this new day, a day that we've never seen before, a day we'll never see again, but it is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, Heartbeat Nicole, Heartbeat Anita, Heartbeat Elaine, Heartbeat Donald, hey, Heartbeat Rainy and Heartbeat Lamont, good morning morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the gathering of hearts. I am Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. Hey, heartbeat, Aaliyah. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation of of what we've been going over this week, the power of Holy Communion. Hey there, Harvey Dalitha, the power. Hey, Harvey Melodia, the, hey, Harvey Rodney and Harvey Carolyn. Hey, Harvey Carolyn, um, the power of Holy Communion. Uh, what are we on? Part three this morning. And so we've already established that communion is not a ritual, that it is what we do as believers to exalt God, to proclaim his death until he comes. And so we talked about, uh, we were in 1 Corinthians 11 on yesterday for I have received, wait, wait a minute, am I reading the wrong one? Yes, for I have received of the Lord that which I have also delivered, verse 24. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body. And we went over that starting in verse 23 and talking about giving thanks to God for communion, giving thanks, Lord, that you're no longer sick, giving thanks, you know, that when your health may portray you or go against you, that you've got something that you can do. You've got something that you can take that will just turn all of that around that no matter what you're going through, communion is the answer. And so we realized that communion actually takes the limits off of our situation Communion takes the focus off of us. It takes the focus off of our situation, but it now puts the focus on God and his power. And so we no longer remember the pain that we're going through. We now focus on the joy that God gives us. We now focus on the joy that when taking communion, what this does. So we don't remember no longer our fears, but now we're focusing on, you know, <clears throat> bravery. We're focusing on that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We're no longer remembering sickness because we know healing it belongs to us that what we get a dose of healing each and every day that it is one of the daily benefits that's found in Psalm 103 and so this is what communion does it takes the limits off and it causes us to remember what Jesus did on the cross that because of this we no longer you know he did this for our sins we no longer have to walk in the footsteps we no longer have to sit at the wrong table but that when we sit at the table and we eat of his bread and drink of his cup that it causes is a change in our lives. And then verse 26 that we concentrated on talked about celebrating the death, proclaiming the death until he comes, that it allows us to have our own sermon to preach about what God has done in his, our lives. And when we eat the bread and when we take up the cup, that it tells us that we're healed, that we realize that there is new life in the blood of Jesus. And so we are, have been, uh, when we take communion, it's actually releasing the DNA of Jesus Christ into us, which gives us strength, which gives us so much joy, which allows us to walk in his grace, which allows us to walk into his mercy. And so when we eat um, of the bread, when we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we're now seeing the worthiness of his body, the worthy, the worthiness of his blood and the worthiness of his death. And so now we're going to move on to the miracles um, that happen when we take communion. So we realize that when we take this communion, um, we're th now... Um, we think about and are reminded of what the cross actually did for us. So let's let's look at the miracles that happen when we do this. So I'm um, in Genesis 14, and I'm excited about this because this is just good when you realize the miracles. What it is, I want you guys to now look at communion totally um, different than you did before, understanding that there is power. We all, you know, grew up taking communion, but I want you to really understand the power of communion because when you understand the power of communion and how it's connected to your wholeness, how when you get this understanding and you begin to do communion as often, it says as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. So you 
you get to set the frequency of how often you do communion. Um, remember, as often as you're doing it, you're remembering all that God has done, all that actually took place up on the cross, but not just what took place up on the cross, what it means for you specifically. When you get this understanding, when you switch your brain, you will understand that you can now walk into this life, you know, the life that Jesus came that we might live abundantly, um, live abundantly and even more abundantly. When you understand the power of communion, when you begin to switch your brain and understand that when you truly meditate on his word, that things happen, that there is a difference in your life. So let's look at Genesis 14. I'm going to be reading out of the um, King James Version. Starting in verse 18 and little background here is Abraham is returning um, from battle and the Melchizedek, the most high priest is waiting for him. And so um, Melchizedek represents Jesus. Abraham represents us being that we are the seed of Abraham. Amen. So let's look at um, verse 18. It says, and Melchizedek, and remember, we're pointing out the miracles that happen when you take communion, that this is what happens when you take communion. It says in Melchizedek, verse 18, king of Salem brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. Now, right here in verse 18, we see it says brought forth bread and wine, that this is communion. And for those, I think it was probably now like almost five years ago who have been hanging out with me, I taught a class on understanding the Bible. And for some of you um, that are on now, you remember this class. And this is where we pointed out the very first communion in the book of Genesis. So it says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the the most high God. And so here um, we see the word, um, let me let me keep reading. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, right there. Let me stop right there. Salem in the Hebrew uh, is a Hebrew word for shalom, which means peace. And so the very first miracle that we have we see that happens um with taking communion is peace comes upon you. So the first miracle we activate is God's peace. I'm now able to plug into the peace of God again. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and in Hebrew, Salem represents peace. It means peace. So Melchizedek, the king of peace brought forth bread and wine. So when you are in here, when you come into communion, you come into peace. That is the first thing that happens. And Melchizedek, king of peace, I'm reading it like that, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the most high God. And again, I told you right now, and right here, he's representing Jesus. Abraham is representing us because we are the seed of Abraham. And so the first thing that happens, he brought forth wine. And when he brought forth the wine, he also brought forth peace. And so when you partake in communion, when you take eat of the bread and you drink of the cup, the first thing that you are coming into is peace for your life. And so communion, the first miracle that communion brings is it brings peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. It brings a peace about all situations because you realize now that I'm partaking. Remember we went over on, on Tuesday and Wednesday that when we take communion, that it is the sharing of life that we're at the table sharing the life of Jesus Christ and so when you take communion the first thing that should overtake you is the peace of God I'm coming to the table I'm coming into communion with my God the God that I'm connected to the God that because I am one of the branches that I now receive life I now receive peace about all the situations that I'm going through when I take communion that is the first thing that happens peace and that is what we need in this life we need to be at peace about everything see you can be at peace when you know that you are sitting at the table that you are at the right table that I'm no longer at that table in first Corinthians 10 the table of demons and the table of devils but I'm at the table with God I'm at the table with his son Jesus and that when I come into communion when I do this peace ought to overtake me. So the first miracle that I experience when I take communion is peace. I got a peace about it. Why? Because I'm with the author and finisher of my faith. I got a peace about it. Why? Because I know that he's already gone before me. I got a peace about it. Why? Because I know that grace and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I got a peace about it. Why? Because I know that he never changes his mind, that he's the same today, yesterday, and forever that he's not like man, that he's not going to shoot me any shade, that he's not going to get in his feelings because I made a mistake. He's not going to get in his feelings because I didn't do what he wanted me to do because he couldn't control me or manipulate me. 
and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor, possessor of heaven and earth. And here we see Abram, he receives a blessing. So the next thing that you get, the next miracle that you get when you take communion is the blessing. I'm going to read this in, in um, the Amplified Classic really quick, quickly. And it says this. And he blessed him and said, blessed, favored with blessings, made blissful, joyful, be Abram by God most high, possessor and maker of heaven and earth. And so the second miracle that you receive when you take communion is you automatically get a blessing. Listen, it says, and blessed him and said, blessed, favored with blessings. Do you understand what favor means? Favor isn't fair. You know, you get it just because you are a child of God. Favor opens doors that no man can open. Favor opens doors again that no man can open. Favor closes doors that you aren't supposed to go through. Favor takes you from the back of the line to the front of the line. Favor doesn't make you wait. Favor just looks at you and says, just because. I'm going to say that again. Favor looks at you and says, just because just because you are who you are. And so it says, and you're blessed and blessed him and said, blessed, favored with blessings, made blissful and joyful. So now, not only are you getting blessed, you're getting favor, but you're getting some joy, the joy that you didn't have because the blessing brings on all kinds of good stuff. Blessings brings on a new mindset. Blessings gives you things that you don't deserve. Blessing gives you things that you don't qualify for blessing you, you you listen you know how you get into a you receive an opportunity and you know you're not qualified for it it's just a favor of God on your life it's just the blessing of God and listen that because you have the blessing of God everywhere you go you're blessed whatever you touch is blessed because of the blessing you're no longer at the bottom you go straight to the top see that's what favor does and so this is what happens that's the second miracle that takes place when I take communion, get this heartbeat nation, that when I take communion, I automatically get peace and I automatically receive the blessing and the favor of God. Glory to God. I'm going to stop right there today because I'm running out of time. But listen, that's the daily dosage for today. The power of Holy Communion Part 3. And we're going over the miracles that take place when we take communion. I've got, I think, three, what, three more to go over and we'll finish this on tomorrow. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you'll find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website Website, God wants me whole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole. And I am. Again, I'm Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch. Go out there, have a spec well, amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. Ladies, 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 put it on your calendar Monday um, at 7 p.m. The next Monday, Monday coming at 7 p.m., the whole woman. Make sure you shoot me an email so that I can send you the Zoom link. You want to be on the Zoom call with me and Elder Carolyn. We got some good stuff planned for you. Again, have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I will see you back here tomorrow morning as we close this thing out. The power of Holy Communion. See you in the morning.